Hi, I'm Justin Kirk, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make it so when you have an animation or a visual effect graph, you can actually make the animation line up with how it's interacting with objects in your game or enemies. So let me just find some enemies. So here we have some enemies. I use my fireball card, and when I throw the fireball, it doesn't just blow up and destroy everything instantly. Instead, it will go slowly and match the actual animation of the fireball. Um, there's also barrels in my game. Oh, this is a room I just added, by the way. It looks really freaking awesome. But uh, there's also barrels in my game like this. And the code will also detect uh, barrel collision and do it like that. So let's get out of this for a sec. So the first things first is my... Um, fireball explosion tutorial i'm going to link that in the description so this isn't a video on how to create the fireball itself i did that in the last video that i made and i'll link that in the description um the explosion for the fireball doesn't look the same in my tutorial i'm going to show you i made this shader graph for the fireball and you can just copy this if you want so this texture is available in the other tutorial that i did but in the other tutorial, I had the entire fireball one color, just like this, right? And for this tutorial, or since then, I've created this shader where I'm putting a gradient onto the fireball so that like part of it is like super glowy bright and then part of it's dark. Um, so I'll show you the gradient. So to add a key, you could just click anywhere in the bottom part. So it starts black, it goes orange. These ones that are a little bit more yellow, they have intensity added for like the glow. So the intensity is 9.1. You can play play with these numbers, of course, because um, if you're using a global volume, it depends on like what you've set your bloom to. So like if you set the intensity to one, that will match mine, but you might have a different settings for the bloom. So just play with the numbers until you find what works for you. But um, anyway, so I'm going to show you the code. So what happens is... Every time I click the mouse button, it instantiates a prefab from this folder, okay? So I have all of my prefabs are saved in one folder. And then this is my fireball prefab here, right? So when I click, it instantiates this prefab. And this prefab has this spell script attached to it right here, okay? So let me go to the spell script. So in the spell script, on collision enter, it plays this method for the... And it uses the collision collider in this method. So let's go to this method. So the first thing it does is it detects if you hit a barrel, and then it does a hit barrel method, which um, if you just hit the barrel straight up, it doesn't blow up the barrel instantly. Uh, the barrels get marks on them, and then if you hit it three times, it blows up. The fireball will blow up the barrel instantly, but hitting it once won't actually blow it up instantly. Then it detects if you hit an enemy, and it does damage um, for the player's attack. Player is just a static class, and these are just like float values. So you could just put a one here. if you Like, you're obviously not going to have a player class. Your classes are not going to match mine. Enemy is... Uh, an abstract class so all of my enemies like this evil cow alien script for example all of my enemies inherit from this enemy script so if you have all of your enemies inheriting from an enemy script that inherits from model behavior you can just check if it hit an enemy so like my evil cow alien my spider my zombie all of them are just enemies right they all inherit from this same class so you can check if it hit an enemy and play the um enemy take damage method and what this is, is th this one's a virtual method. So I've described the method here with a code or whatever, right? But then virtual means that if you've also written code in the actual script itself for take damage, which I, I haven't, it looks like in this case, but if you, um, oh no, I did, okay. If you write code, oh no, 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 this is not in the script. So I didn't do that here. But if you write code in Evil Al Cow Alien script, it would do the um, subclass method first but if there is no method in the subclass it will do this method so that's what a virtual method is and then an abstract method basically means that you're always going to implement the method in the subclass and you can actually save the subclass without implementing said method so like custom death code for example should be right here so you you have to you have to um, set up the method in the subclass, and that's kind of what an abstract class does. But um, anyway, so this checks if th there's an enemy component on what it collided with. And if there is, you you call the take damage method on that. So that's not related to the fireball. So if it hits something that isn't a trigger, it plays an attack explosion, okay? So this is the case for all of my attacks. So not just the fireball, Any all of my attacks have attack explosions that are related to the attack. So for example, if I use my goo attack and it hits the wall, there's also a goo explosion that matches that attack. So even like the default attack here, I'll show you. Even the default attack. So like you see me shooting the wall here, 
Um, there's an explosion that's happening on the wall for all of my attacks. All of them have this um, explosion effect. So um, anyway, so yeah, that, that's for that. So it goes through this list and it goes by the order of priority. So it's only going to make one explosion, right? So if you have the fireball, that's the very first thing that's going to, it's going to check. If you have the fireball, that's what it's going to shoot first. And then attack modifiers are going to come first, obviously, because they're things that you use one time or like the goo, for example, this only lasts 60 seconds or 30 seconds or something. So if you have this, it's going to be what shows up on top. And then when it, when you use it, like for example, for my fireball, after I use it, I remove the attack modifiers. It only happens one time. Um, so this is like the order of operations and it's a bunch of else if statements because only one of these attack explosions is going to play. So if the player attack modifier so when i use my card that's in a separate script but i'm not going to go over that because that's going to be too complicated but when you when i use my card this is a list of attack modifiers is a list of strings that i've declared in the static class called player so i have a list of strings called attack modifiers right here right it's just a list of string it's a static class so you can use this from any of the classes that you have right and it it adds this fireball used string to the list of attack modifiers and then when it hits the wall if this list has this in it then it does this code and this is the very first thing to run so none of this other stuff is going to run um except for this bottom one um but uh anyway so yeah so i instantiate the fireball explosion prefab let me just zoom out so you can see this full thing so i instantiate this you could just copy paste this code if you want to this is the location that the um prefab that you've made is inside of your game so if you go to your prefab which um it's this one here for me you can see the path at the bottom if you don't have this view if you have this view instead you could just drag this just like uh you know like in windows explorer you get like the details view or whatever you could just drag this to the left to get this view um when you've made the pre like when you've made the fireball in your game to make a prefab you just have to drag it out of the scene into this folder and we'll create what's called a prefab that way you can reuse the same thing over and over again so yeah, basically this just instantiates that prefab and it's an explosion. So it doesn't need any type of like movement or um, velocity or anything like that. It's just in the same spot. And then it removes this attack modifier. That way the next time something blows up, it's not going to blow up as a fireball. And then it plays a fireball explosion. Uh, the auto audio manager, I just literally copy price paste of that from the Brackies video. So you can go look that up if you want to just type Brackies audio manager and this fire explosion noise. This came from Pixabay, so you can go on Google, type in Pixabay. You can find, like, there's hundreds of sound effects available for free on Pixabay. Um, there's, like, a drop-down just for sound effects, and you can find that here. And then this is the main thing that is what actually makes it detect if it hit anything. So I'm starting a coroutine called Slow Radius Damage. So let me just go to that. So it takes in four values, the radius, the speed, the position, and the damage. All of these values are pretty self-explanatory. This is how big the explosion is. This is how fast the explosion protrudes from the center. This is where the explosion happens. And then this is the damage that it's doing to my enemies. I, I'm creating a hash set of the enemies. The reason I'm using a hash set instead of an array or a list is because hash set is the best container to do contain. This method contains um, is as long as all of the items in your list are unique you can put them into a hash set and this um this container has the fastest lookup time for classes inside of it so hash set is the best thing for using contains and that's why we're doing that so what we're going to do is every when it hits the enemy it can only hit it one time we don't want it hitting it multiple times so if we add it to this hash set each time it hits an enemy, it can add it to the hash set. That way it doesn't hit multiple enemies. So we declare this hash set of hit enemies for um, uh, one to the radius, which our radius is 300. Our radius gets bigger for each iteration of this for loop. We set the current radius to I, okay? So the current radius is just a float that I've declared outside of this method so that we can draw a wire sphere for the radius. So you see that white circle that's around the fireball. Well, that's how you know what is being actually hit. Without this, you won't be able to tell where the fireball is actually hitting. So you'll see the animation, but this is how you can line up. Like you need to do, you have to add this or else you're not gonna know where it's hitting. So I'll show you what I'm talking about, hang on. So we land our fireball and we hit the wall. Let's just pause. Okay. So you can see this white circle 
This is called a gizmo, and if you're not seeing this in the game view in the top right, you can turn it on with this button here. Okay, this is a gizmo that lets us know what the radius currently is. So if you turn this on using this code that I've set here, every time you change this radius, this will redraw. So it will just redraw it. Um, every time any of these values change, it will redraw the sphere. And then you can see, because the current radius is the radius that we're at, you can see where it will be hitting. And you want to line this up with the fireball explosion as best as possible. Um, this seems like it's not exactly in line with it, but it's it's close enough like you would never be able to tell the difference and it go expands fast enough where it doesn't matter i'm going to probably spend more time lining this up but i just wanted to make the video i just uh i spent a, a huge amount of time actually making the code and then i'm just showing it is obviously we're not going to spend all day on this okay so that's that's why i have this here so that you can draw it so you can actually see where the the radius of the explosion is so for each iteration we're changing the radius to be larger we're getting a list of the colliders that it's collided with using overlap sphere uh this this parameter is the radius right so like if this is at 50 for example anything that's within 50 will count so the reason we have to add the enemies to a hash set is that everything inside of the radius will get counted so if it goes bigger than the enemy every single time it will every single iteration it will it will find that enemy. So it's getting the colliders. If there's an enemy, so we're trying to get this enemy component inside of it. If it exists, we're going to check if our hit enemies contains it already. And if it doesn't, we're going to add it to our list of hit enemies. And then we're going to damage our enemy the same way we do when we hit it. Your code for damaging your enemy is obviously going to be not probably the same as mine. You you can I made a, a video on how to make the abstract class. So if you want, you can go into my how to make a game like the Binding of Isaac series. And there's a, a, a video on how to create it from scratch if you want to copy my abstract class that I'm using. But it checks if there's an enemy and it checks if there's a destructible object. So destructible, I use this for my rocks, my barrels, everything that blows up into pieces, I use destructible on, but I only want this to blow up barrels because fireballs don't blow up rocks, they only blow up barrels. So it also checks if the name contains barrel and then it does the barrel blow up method and plays the audio for that. Um, in my audio manager, I added a random um, range for the pitch to mine. So I don't know if Bracky's video has that or not, it might, but you can add a pitch to it and the pitch will like that way when you hit a barrel it's not always the exact same noise it's slightly different it really really adds a lot to the effect so like when when the barrels are blowing up it's not always the exact same noise it's like there's a variance which makes it a lot better and i use that for my cows as well when you hear my cows mooing or whatever that's just me literally saying moo but the, the pitch is like two or like something higher or whatever so then we wait for the seconds of how fast the speed is so the speed the lower the number the faster it's going because this is just how fast we're going through this for loop and if you want um, to make this a better performance thing you could make the speed a higher number and then you could make this instead of plusing just like this you could go i plus equals five or something like that or plus equals ten that way it's checking a larger radius on each iteration if you don't because my radius is currently 300 this is going to run 300 times so depending on your computer that might be good or bad like it it really depends on your computer i obviously have a top of the line computer so i'm not worried about that but if you want to make a better performance you could just change this to be plus equals five but just know like the exactness of it matching the fireball itself will obviously suffer from like the bigger you make the number the less it will line up with the actual fireball itself we should probably make this at least plus two i'll probably fix it like i said i'm not going to do that on this video but um anyway so when i'm done with this entire um, check or whatever, we're gonna destroy the game object. So that is the attack, not the yeah. So that yeah. So that's the attack. It's, so the attack itself will get destroyed um, after this runs. This is the explosion. So the explosion will get destroyed after five seconds. So the the fireball doesn't take five seconds, but you have to destroy your objects because the explosion, even though you, it finishes and it's not looping the game object will stay there indefinitely until you destroy it. I also have code where if I switch rooms or whatever, oh, should I get out of the game? Hang on. All of my game objects get destroyed when I switch. Oh, shit, I lost the fireball. So like, for example, this card, if I leave the room and come back to the room, oh man, I missed a different card, whoops. 
um, if, if I leave the room and come back to it, the, the objects get deleted. Like, they don't stay there. Like, I have a script that in between rooms, it just kind of, like, um, deletes it or whatever. So, anyway, so that's how I um, handled the um, fireball, like, damage detection. I hope you guys find this video useful. Um, I know I didn't really find anything like this when I was looking online. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.